What is up YouTube fam, Robbie C here, and today we are gonna talk about a shot that more people need to add to their game, and especially if you're new, this could be the difference between loving it your first time out and proper struggling out there. But first, we need to ask the most important question. How are you doing today, Nathan? Are you having a good day? Today we're talking about the most reliable shot in disc golf. Let's jump into it. So catch me if I fall. My hope for today's video is to enlighten folks onto a shot shape that I think a lot of people have seen thrown before, but may not realize the pros and cons of it being added to your game. Because choosing to add this shot more frequently to your game, I think is not only going to allow you better scoring options, but it's gonna allow you more consistency and less frustration while you're out there. I also wanna to try to explain this in a way that if you're taking someone out for their first ever round of disc golf, then you can send them this quick video to watch before they get out and go play. That way they can enjoy themselves a little bit more while they're out there on the course rather than them having to work through the same frustration that some of us had to feel during our first round of disc golf. So if you're one of the people who got sent this video and you're about to go play your first round, welcome to the sport. We're super glad to have you here and we hope you love it out there. Today we are talking about the most reliable shot in disc golf and that is the Heiser. The Heiser simply means that when we're holding the disc, we take that outside edge of the disc and we hold it down. What this means is when we throw it, it's going to make sort of a crescent arc shape or like that moon or rainbow shape while we throw it and the disc is going to go out in the air and then fall back in a straight line. Now, if you're newer to the game or you don't quite have the arm speed to sort of get these discs to fly in different ways and shapes, it can seem like every single disc that you're throwing is just following this exact hyzer shape and you're throwing it out there and then it's just crashing down to the ground. For right-handed players, it's gonna go out and then crash to the left and for left-handed players, it's gonna go out and crash to the right. Now, some of you might be saying, well, Mr. YouTube man, if it's already doing that when I'm beginning, how is that the most reliable shot in the game? I'm glad you asked. If we wanna talk about the most reliable shot in the game, then we also need to take a second to talk about the most difficult shot in the game and that is the straight shot. The most difficult shot to throw in the game is a flat and straight shot. Lots of folks want to take their discs and frisbees and throw them as flat as possible in order to get as straight of a flight as possible because when we think about the game of golf, we're really never trying to spend a lot of time unless you get really advanced. We're not trying to really hook the ball or push the ball left or right. We want to just kind of line our feet up correctly and boop hit the ball super straight, super far, and bada boom, bada bing, we get an easy score. When it comes to disc golf, a lot of people can approach it the exact same way. Let's take that silver target that's out there in the shade over there, for instance. If I wanna throw the most difficult shot in disc golf, which is the flat and straight shot, I bring in a ton of variance to this shot. You see, when I throw this disc, every single frisbee wants to behave a little bit differently. Some discs naturally wanna go right, some discs naturally wanna go left. Some discs have a little more glide to them, which makes them want to stay in the air longer. And some discs don't have glide, which makes them a lot better for approaching, so they're going to drop faster. If I'm trying to throw directly at that basket and I go with the flat straight shot, upon releasing the disc, I'm going to have the opportunity to either have it go too far right or too far left. I either give it too much height or I don't give it enough. All four of those variants I have to think about as well as calculating the distance that I'm trying to throw the disc. And I don't know if maybe you're like a mathematician and this is super easy for you to do all that calculation, but I like to try to keep things plain and simple. As a registered pro disc golfer, is it possible to throw the flat straight shot? Sure. But look, right there, I did throw a flat and straight shot, but I didn't aim it correctly at the basket, which means that I'm going to have a long look trying to get the birdie on this hole. That was a little better, but I've still left myself a bit of a putt getting close to the basket. Why? Because in throwing it flat and straight, I also forgot to calculate for how much the disc wants to finish spinning at the end of its flight. All of these variables come into play when we're trying to select the right disc for the right shot. And that is where the hyzer can eliminate all of those calculations so that I'm really only having to calculate two things. How far do I want to throw it and how much arc do I want to put it on? The most reliable shot in the game is the hyzer or that rainbow arc. If I want to throw a hyzer, I can take that outside edge of the disc and put it down, which means that when I throw it on a backhand, it's definitely going to want to follow that line. So rather than aiming to throw it at the basket, I can actually aim at that big old tree to the right and sort of visualize this rainbow shape or this rainbow arc 
that I'm simply going to take this disc and try to slide it along that track or along that roller coaster track and let it just ride into the basket. You see, just like that, it's in line with the basket and all I needed to do is maybe give it a little bit more distance and I'd be underneath the basket. But I'm still only maybe 10, 15 feet away, which with learning a little bit of a confident putt, we'll talk about that in just a second. I allowed myself to get right next to the basket and I didn't have to worry about how much the disc was going to finish at the end of its flight. I didn't have to worry about turning the disc over or any of those things. By simply thinking about putting the disc on that hyzer and throwing it on that crescent moon shape, I was able to park the basket. Now let's see if I can put my money where my mouth is and I threw two flat straight shots at the basket and one of them was okay and one was really not that great. With two hyzer shots, let's see how much easier I can do. Three or it's luck. As you can see, rather than thinking about disc golf as a game where I simply need to go on the shortest line possible from point A to point B, I allow myself to follow the hyzer and this reliable shot I can do over and over again. And the beautiful part is I don't always have to do it with the same type of discs. And if I learn this shot, it will actually open up more shot shaping opportunities in the future. Now we talked about putting. What I don't want to do is throw the disc like I've been doing before. This is a lot more of a powerful shot, which is a lot harder to aim. When I find myself putting, I'm going to go simply where my disc landed, just like in golf, and I'm going to putt the disc. And think about putting the disc as if someone walked up and they were like, hey bro, can you toss me that disc real fast? And you would think nothing about it, and you would just simply toss them the disc. Now the nice thing is with humans, they have hands and they can kind of catch things. Baskets don't really reach out and grab the disc for you. One of the easiest ways that I teach people who are putting for the first time is to think about it in a cornhole fashion. You're gonna take your fingers and put them under the disc and you're simply, you can even step into it if you want, and you're gonna toss the cornhole. A Little bit too high, yeah. But as you can see, both of those shots were the flat or straight shots that I tried to throw at this bass. None of them too incredible and none of them very close. Yet if I go to the first shot that I threw, this is from my first hyzer shot. This one's close enough to the basket that I'm very easily just tossing it in. And as you can see, our other two drives also landed extremely close to the basket. The key to throwing discs well is to think about them spinning. And when you visualize this crescent shape or this hyzer line, all you can do is simply set the disc on the track, bring it back, and then throw it up onto that track. It's going to allow you to sort of think about sliding this across the table and spinning it across the table. And as you learn to trust of putting this outside edge of the disc down, you're going to have it even more comfortably ride that line as you throw it out there. Once again, this even applies to lefty outside edge of the disc down. You're throwing it on that same line on the left side. Notice from my experienced players that you can also apply this to forehands because once again, outside edge of the disc down, I'm now matching the lefty line of throwing it out there. Or for my left-handed players, as I throw it on this line, I match the righty line. Outside edge of the disc down is what creates this hyzer shape. So now that we've talked about the obvious benefits of throwing a hyzer shape and how you don't have to worry about all the different calculations and variables, you can simply trust that you're throwing the disc out on this hyzer and all you have to worry about is make sure that this outside edge is down, knowing that it's gonna fight back and I can hang it out super wide and let it fight all the way back. I just have to worry about my distance control at that point and how close or far I want that landing point to be. And while setting it on the track can make sense, I wanna talk about something to visualize visualize while you're throwing the disc that I think can be super helpful in terms of throwing a hyzer and that is thinking about a low to high motion that is we're going to throw the disc from here to a high point we're going to think about pulling it across and throwing it high like so think about it on a keyboard if I were to hit that backslash key as we think about throwing hyzers we're going to come through and when we go to swing or throw the disc we're going to, rather than thinking about coming through flat, rather than thinking about coming through high to low, we're going to start low and bring it through to high. This tracing motion is allowing us to see that line and visualize that line 
so that we can throw the disc accordingly. Now, another thing that lots of people may say is that, Robbie, in that last video, well, I saw you throw pigs, and those are overstable putt and approach discs, so maybe you'd be cheating out there. For the newer player watching this, don't worry about those phrases. You're probably gonna be using discs like a leopard and a shark, and thankfully, I have two of those with me. I wanna take a quick moment to demonstrate that you can actually still throw your leopard and shark on these same hyzer lines while you're out there playing for the first time. And I also wanna give a little hint that you can come to of how learning to throw hyzers can take you into another step in evolution of throwing a really solid shot, which takes that really hard shot that we talked about in the beginning of the straight shot. And by learning to throw hyzers, you're gonna be on your way to it anyways. We're gonna start with the shark once again. I'm trying to throw it on a hyzer. So I'm gonna put that outside edge down. I'm gonna make sure that outside edge is down. I'm gonna draw low to high and we're gonna throw it on out there. Now, that basket is over 400 feet away. And even if I was one of our top touring pros inside of the sport, I doubt that I would have the ability to get that shark or this leopard all the way there. So don't worry about getting to the basket necessarily but let's just think about getting this disc to the middle of the fairway, which is a lot easier when I'm throwing hyzers. Even with having a more built up arm and being a little more competent when it comes to throwing discs and frisbees, I can still throw these beginner starter sets on hyzers, which means that you should be able to throw hyzers really comfortably with this. But I wanna take it a step further and talk to you real fast about why the hyzer is a great transition into a beautiful shot that you're gonna hear called the hyzer flip. Remember how at the beginning of the video I talked about how some discs want to go right, some discs want to go left, some have a little more glide, and some want to get to the ground. These different characteristics of the discs are what make disc golf super fun and exciting, and it's why you're going to see lots of players around the course having a bag full of frisbees because they want to make sure that they have every shot shape covered. And if you also remember, we said that the hardest shot to throw was that straight shot. Well, this is where the hyzer flip comes in super handy. There are some discs that are naturally understable, meaning they want to resist whatever flight you put them on. For a right-handed backhand thrower, an understable disc is naturally gonna wanna go to the right. A great example of this would be the leopard that's in the end of a starter set that lots of you may have. The reason a hyzer works is because when I throw a disc with a right-hand backhand, the spin that I'm imparting on the disc naturally makes it wanna go left. But an understable disc wants to go right. So what does that mean? This internal battle between the disc that wants to go right and me throwing it in a way that makes it want to go left and by putting it on hyzer, it makes it want to go even more to the left. This internal battle is going to cause it to fly longer and straighter, which is exactly what we're looking for in disc golf. So a hyzer flip is when you take understable disc or something that people would call flippy. See where we're going with this? And you throw it on some hyzer, depending on how understable the disc is and how much it wants to go naturally to the right. That determines how much hyzer you need to put it on in order to get it to quote stand up and fly straight as you saw me demonstrate with the leopard and shark before if you put them on enough hyzer they're not going to stand up and ride straight they're going to ride that hyzer the whole time but if i put them on a little bit less hyzer or throw them a little bit harder it's going to cause them to do hyzer flip stand up and go straight the motion's not going to change when you're throwing these hyzers you're still going to go low to high it's just determining how much extra hyzer you're going to put on the disc and if you need to sort of make it so you're not throwing as extreme hyzers, you can take your backslash and sort of flatten it out, which is gonna cause you to throw more flatter shots while still allowing that hyzer to come into play. So that's gonna wrap things up for today's video. Once again, if you're new to the sport and a friend sent you this video, I hope this was helpful. And if it was helpful, definitely feel free to check out other videos on the channel as the entire goal of Robbie C Disc Golf is to help beginners improve one stroke at a time. But if you're not a beginner and you're one of our loyal watchers who even happened to share this video with another person i want to say as always thank you for watching and i hope that maybe adding a few more hyzers to your game could be the difference between you scoring well on the course and you getting out there and feeling a little frustrated at the end of your round questioning like why do i even do this mr youtube man i will say that the moment i added an overstable putt and approach disc to my bag and started looking for hyzers anywhere that i had the opportunity to throw them was a huge difference maker in my consistency to not only throw great tee shots but also to consistently park the basket when I had those longer up shots because I no longer had to worry about, oh man, but if I turn this over, if I juice it or whatever, then I'm gonna have a long putt. Nah, 
you just grab that disc, throw it on hyzer, knowing that it definitely wants to help you out with that shot shape, and it just parks next to the basket. You have a good time, love your pig, and guys, it's just that amazing. All that to say, thank you for watching, and I hope you have an amazing rest of the week, and that you can make it fantastic for someone else too. But for now, we're gonna leave you with the birdie.